Welcome back to another episode of Boom and Bush, your home for NFL Draft Talk. I'm your host, Terry, and today I'm talking about mock drafts and why I don't do them, but uh, more largely just about mock drafts in general as far as uh, what are they useful for and what they are not useful for. So as we sit today, we are almost two weeks away on the dot from uh, the 2018 NFL Draft. Really excited, getting close in uh Not only as we get close, but even when we first start, even sometimes before the offseason, we get these things called mock drafts, just flooding the waves of the internet, uh, flooding Twitter, flooding NFL.com, ESPN, everywhere. And so uh, what started off as just kind of a fun exercise back in the day uh, has turned into a full-blown um industry almost to be honest with you i mean you got espn the uh evil mickey mouse himself uh where they're charging you to look at full draft rankings or full mock mock drafts you only can see a a certain part if you're not an insider stuff like that uh you got every like whatever uh armchair or the (laughs) armchair armchair Draft guys, uh, that do this thing. You got a lot of them doing their own thing on Twitter with mock drafts and everybody wants to look at mock drafts. Thousands of mock drafts. They're like, uh, March Madness brackets. Thousands of them just everywhere. And no matter how many you look at, you just can't stop. <laughs> and it's fun. I get it. Honestly, you know, I don't want to, uh, poo poo on anybody that likes looking at mock drafts and everything. I understand they can be fun. They can be informative to a certain point. But for me, uh, specifically, as I said, when I started doing this channel, I don't do mock drafts, so don't ever expect them from me. But the reason I don't do mock drafts, uh, it's, it's a couple reasons. I think mainly though, cause I used to do them, but mainly it, it goes back to what you're trying to get out of the draft process. And for everybody that's different for the professionals, quote unquote, in the media, of course, they have to keep their job. So, uh, they like, they ask them to do mock drafts. So they got to do them. It's that simple. But for me, uh, what kind of started off when you think about doing draft work is like, Oh man, I got to know the right picks. I got to know the picks before they happen. And then eventually for me, just realizing like that doesn't matter to me <laughs> at all. I mean, it's cool and it's fun. Like you're the only guy in the room that might, uh, be able to guess picks, but. You know, after a certain amount of time in the first round, it it just, it doesn't matter. And so you don't do all this work to guess picks. Uh, you do all this work to understand prospects. And for me, um, more fun than watching a draft and say, Oh, I could guess this pick is watching an NFL game on Sunday or Monday or Thursday. And the lineup come up and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember watching him, uh, coming out of Georgia. Oh, I remember him out of Bama. Oh, I remember him from Ohio State. I remember him, uh, from Illinois State, whatever. I, I could pick those people out and I could actually speak to their talents and how they work within that, uh, system that they're playing for or how they might not work or how, you know, this rookie's doing and how the situation really worked out for him or how this guy, you know, was, uh, a boomer bust, but the right coach really put him in the gear. That stuff is more exciting to me and more important to me, especially as I talk about free agency. When um, free agency comes around, I talked about when my Bears were uh, getting Allen Robinson, and a lot of people all of a sudden want to know about Allen Robinson, talk about him. I'm like, well, that's the cool thing. It's like, even if you think we don't need this position or this guy didn't get drafted by us, so I don't care about him, eventually you never know what's going to happen and when you might need to know about a player. And so that's kind of a fun thing that I like as well. So um, that's the the heart of the issue. But then it comes down to drafts are just unpredictable, especially after they changed the uh, rookie scale with the um, bargain agreement. Before, you know, when rookies used to get paid ridiculous amounts of money, uh, you used to have no one overall pick coming in as the highest paid player in their position, stuff like that. But once they changed the rookie scale and um, kind of cut down how much a rookie could make, it made trades a lot more viable it's on draft day and outside of draft day. Um, and so you saw, you just see a lot more trades because it's not as expensive as it used to be to get a rookie. And so 
it's it's way it's, it's way too unpredictable. And that's the thing. Like even if um let's say no trades happen in the first round, everybody pick what they were supposed to pick. It's going to be a certain percentage chance that you get that right. Like March Madness. You know, bringing up the brackets, those teams are going to play each other. They're not going to all of a sudden trade the team and they're playing a different team. No, those teams are going to play each other. So you got a 50 50 chance at picking. Uh, it's less than that, of course, with draft picks, but even if, you know, you'll have a certain percentage chance, but now you add in the fact that teams can trade and different now, different team with different need and all that is too much. It's it's just, you can't, you can't guess that stuff. So it is a, it's an impossible task, (laughs) but B also, like I said, that's not really the goal for me. And so that's kind of why I gave them up. Uh, But as far as mock drafts, as we're starting to hear this lot of stuff, the only thing I will say, I mean, that really feel like um, as far as, philosophy and how you should go into draft season looking at mock drafts is take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I don't care if you see the same player at the same team in a thousand mock drafts, take it with a grain of salt. Cause what happens is none of us outside of these organizations have information, even the insiders and the professionals, they get tips here and there, but for all 32 teams, Nobody knows besides the people in those buildings. So uh if you feel like you don't know, so you got to lean on the ESPN people. Yeah, they do the work, the homework as far as tapes. Yeah, they got their own opinions. Yeah, they might have one or two sources. But trust me, they don't know either. And so what happens is that since nobody knows that we start to lean on those media personalities, not even them, even some people that just put mock drafts out. We just start to lean on what we see because that's the only information we have. And so draft night, your plan is sometimes it never comes out. It'll come out on draft night sometimes, but some plans you never hear about till years later where a team wanted this guy, but he got picked or they tried to get this trade and go through. Sometimes you never know. And so since we never get that info, uh, people lean towards what they see and you see all these mock drafts because everybody wants to do one, uh, to get eyeballs on it and get clicks and stuff of that nature. So, uh, for me, it's just take it with a grain of salt and realize that these guys, while they have some connections, they don't know for all 32 teams what's actually happening. And then, of course, they can't think of the trade. So, uh, now the one thing I'll say positively for mock drafts, is you do get a sense of draft stock of where people are ranking certain people. So despite, you know, a team needing a certain position, you still can see uh, where players at that position are going. So let's say Calvin Ridley, um, number one receiver in his class by far. And you can say, okay, well, he's number one receiver in his class, but, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, it, everything that doesn't tell you the whole story you look and say okay the number receive number one receiver in this class is usually going in the 20s now i got a better picture like okay he's the number one receiver in this class but obviously this class isn't super talented because he's going in the 20s and so things like that nature that can really help you kind of form an idea but at the same time you got to think that even though that's a consensus amongst these people on the internet That still doesn't mean it's the same for a team. And so while we have draft stock, the idea of draft stock and uh, people talk about the combine and the buzz and blah, 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 all this. The reality is those players are ranked differently for every single team. And the reality is your team might not rank it the same as the media is ranking it. And so while you'll look and say, um, Let's just say uh, Bradley Chubb. Let's just say you'll look and say, okay, clearly Bradley Chubb is the highest player at this position. Everybody's saying that Um, in all these mock drafts. Okay, but you don't know. Your team might have Marcus Davenport higher on their board for certain reasons, or they might have somebody else, or they might uh, not like Bradley Chubb because of one certain thing. And so... It's, you just got to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, like, it's fine to look at and kind of educate yourself. But the things I don't like is when people try to get in argue with, arguments with me 
or try to justify their point by mock drafts. That that to me is silly. I mean, uh, like people tell you, well, that's all we got to go off. The same thing like numbers and stats. That's all we got to go off. We don't go to practice. Just because it's all you have to go off doesn't make it an accurate picture. And so that doesn't make you right. I mean, you can kind of say, okay, well, this is how I arrive to that point of view or that conclusion. But don't try to sit here and make it seem like a fact because you saw all these mock drafts. I saw this mock draft. five, And, you know, there's people that compile mock drafts now. 80% of mock drafts have this guy going here. Like, so what? Mock drafts aren't done by GMs. When mock drafts are getting put out by GMs, then you can count me on board with mock drafts. But until then, I don't, I don't really care. I mean, again, it's a fun exercise, but don't take it as fact and don't take it as law. Now, the last thing I'll say though, um, one thing I kind of heard about this year, which is such a simple concept, and I'm not sure why I didn't think about this. Um, but I might be intrigued for next year. Uh, and this might sound like a dub moment to some people, but there's this, uh, new kind of wave of people doing mock drafts as if they're the GM. So they're making their picks, what they would do if they were running the team. And some people say, well, duh, that's kind of what mock draft is. That's not what a mock draft is. Mock drafts usually are supposed to be and purely supposed to be you picking as if you were uh, whoever's actually picking. So if I'm picking for the Bears, I'm picking like I'm Ryan Pace. And so it's not necessarily what I would do or what I think is, is what they would do or, you know, and that's when people look into historical picks. Like they historically don't pick this position at this type or this team historically trades back or this team, you know, or, you know, whatever. And that's where a lot of factors come into it. And people try to pick that way, which, you know, I understand, uh, makes sense, but I think a more, not when say a more accurate to the actual draft, of course not, but a more useful exercise would be for people to, you know, for me to make a mock draft as if I'm the GM. And so then you get a real clear sense of who I think is more valuable than who. Uh, what trades I might think could happen, things of that nature. And uh, admittedly, admittedly, it makes it more fun for everybody, I would say. It does make it less uh, credible, I guess, even though none of these are real credible. But I think even from the big guy, the big wigs, I mean, because mostly whenever it's Mike Mayock, Mel Kuyper, um, McShay, DJ, any of these guys, they're usually picking from the eyes of that actual GM. But I think it would be more fun. And some people do do this already, I'll, of course. But I think it would be more fun to do it as if I'm the GM for all these teams. And I think I might get into that next year. But anyway, that's my thought on mock drafts. Uh, go to comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what are your feelings on mock drafts? Do you think I'm wrong? Uh, I doubt it. But do you think I'm wrong that mock drafts absolutely serve a purpose and they do give you some type of whatever. Who knows? Uh, so go to the comment section. Let me know. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Share it around. And remember, thank you for listening.